and here we have rigs and we've got all the main rigs here so we've got the pendulum, Monty, the fox which is a kind of strange ball like creature of the tail, Stuart and the ball so the ball is what you want and if you go in there there's only one it's what I'm using it's the ball so download that and then this is what it looks like so I'll just press 6 so I can see the texture on it yeah the ball right so we've got our settings all sussed up so all seems to be working the next thing that you want to do is you want to set a project okay so you're gonna you're gonna go project because you want it all saved and nice and neat and all in the same place okay okay so I'm going to set a project oh sorry before I set a project there we go I need to make a new project there we go very basic thing so new project so I'm gonna call it um, bouncing sorry not in the scenes folder up here where it says current project play blast so I'll call it um, bounce new there we go press on new bouncing ball okay bouncing ball uh, nice and straightforward this is where it's saving it presently on my desktop which I don't really want I'll call bouncing ball new because I've done this a few times I'm gonna save it somewhere else I'm gonna put it on my G drive yeah so I'll put it in the bouncing ball new yeah so on the G drive right so I'll accept that and then it's going to make all the folders and the directories as you know probably I will set the project so back down to the project before I went to the project window now I'm going to set project now I'll go to my G drive G and uh, date modified I should find bouncing ball there we go bouncing ball new and if I click on that of course it has all the file folders Maya's made them for me so yeah I'm going to go down to bouncing ball new click on that and set so that's uh, that's as good to go now so I've got the ball and now I'm going to bring in some I'm going to make some geometry for this to work on so first things first I'll create a plane so I'll do it again you know create so oh by the way um, we're in the animation tab for this yeah the animation tab as opposed to the modeling or rigging so make sure in your animation tag that way you're gonna have the same buttons as me at the top okay so create first thing we'll do is create a plane so create um, polygons primitives plane okay and I'm just going to click on the scale tool and I'll crack that up I'm going to zoom out a little bit in this, mm, how big, maybe this, that'll do, yeah. I'm going to, sh where it's a show, I'm going to take off the grid, because I find it a little bit annoying having the grid, so that's, all this stuff is in the show menu, all the things that you can see. And now I'm going to make something for this ball to slide off, so I'll go create polygons primitives again and this time I'm going to bring in a cube now you can see the cube in the side window I'll move the cube over like this I'm going to scale up the cube a little bit like that maybe a bit more maybe like that that'll do and then I'm going to move the cube over here you know just a, by pressing the space bar I'm just going to make this window a bit bigger so I've got the and I can always go back of course by pressing the space bar I mean you're probably aware of all this stuff and now by press I'm going to just alter the shape of the cube slightly I'm gonna press F8 on my keyboard if I press F8 it makes this component mode and then what I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna select these two points at the bottom and you see here we've got all these uh, little uh, 
magnets but the magnets are quite good you can snap to things so I'm going to snap it to the grid I'm going to snap these two curves so they line up with the bottom of mine and so I can just take this now and just using the see the Y I'm just snapping it to the bottom and then I press a F8 again and it's back in object mode and now this is lying on the bottom of this which is where I want it okay so that's all good so far. The next thing I'm going to do is again I'm going to press on F8 and I'm going to select these two keys at the back here and all I'm going to do, I'm going to take the snapping thing off now because I don't need it anymore. I'm just going to raise this up a little bit to make it into a ramp. Yeah? So we've got something like that. They'll do. That's fine. You can make it steep or unsteep as you like. Right. So I've got the ramp and I've got the bowl. And it looks like we're almost good to go. Right. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm the way I'm going to work this is I'm going to do this a little bit. I'm going to do sections at a time because I think that makes it easier. So first of all, I'm going to press on F4, sorry, F5 just to make it grayscale again because initially I'm not going to animate the rotations. So I'm just going to animate the translations of the ball and in doing so the pattern won't be a distraction because you know if the pattern's there the ball will just look like it's sliding initially and this way we don't know if it's sliding it can look like it's turning so the first thing to do once you've pressed on you know five to get it grayscale is I'm going to take the ball now I'm just going to show you going a little bit more closely to how this how this is rigged you have this control here, maybe I'll do it in this window, it's probably a bit easier, you can see it better. This window, this uh, control in the middle, is the essentially the main control. Then we have these for squash and stretch. Yeah, there's one at the bottom as well, but anyway, so it does the same thing. And then you have this ball, which can, it looks like it does nothing. Uh, even if I, I'll turn the, 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 it looks like it's like, you're thinking, what is that doing? It's not doing anything but it actually orientates the squash and stretch on the ball which is quite handy you know so if I want to if I if I was to oh if I was to pull it here just one thing you, if you notice that these arrows are just pointing up and down one thing you're going to end up doing a lot in Maya is changing it from object to world when, when you're using the manipulators like now this manipulator is set in world so it's always going to point up but if I go here and double click on this manipulator the move tool and change it from world to object now if I pull on the Y it's actually pulling in the direction that this control is orientated in so the stretch will be along this axis yeah so something to bear in mind Anyway, so I'll get it, put it back to where it was. Right. Now, and I'll make press F5 to make it grayscale again. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the ball using the main control and we're going to put it at the top of this, this slope like that. So make it look like it's, it's about there. Okay, and also in terms of frames, I've got myself 200 just now. So I'll leave it at 200. That, that should be enough. You know, 200 frames. Okay, so I've got it at the top of the slope. And I'm just going to go to frame number one. And I'm going to press, if you press S on, the, on your keyboard, you make a frame. It's the easiest way, yeah? Um, you can also go key, set key, but it all involves more effort. Just pressing S is very, very straightforward. And another thing I'm going to have turned on is this button here. If you look at the far right bottom of your key, you see there's a, a kind of, I don't know how you describe that, kind of circle with something happening in it. If you press that on, it goes red. It means it's an auto key function. I find this quite handy because it means that I mean it has its disadvantages sometimes it keys when you don't want it to just because you move something but 
overall it's pretty good. It means you don't have to keep on pressing S all the time. So I'm going to move to, say, frame... I don't know. We'll see what this looks like. How long is this going to take to roll down? About a second? So let's, let's say about a second. So let's see if it's a second, it'll be 24 frames. So let's say it's a second. And then I'm going to go to the, the, the bit just before it comes off, essentially. So you see, it's already made a key. Just before it comes off here. Uh, uh, the, uh, and maybe a bit more there. Now, okay, so. The first thing you'll notice is, I don't know how familiar you are with the time editor, but so we've got this, we've got this. So this is what we have so far. If I'm, I'm just going to play this. I'm going to pull this time editor back so it, it, it's just only showing the first 24 frames, nothing else. So it doesn't get confusing. So this is what we got, yeah? Now you can see that that's, the motion is all wrong uh, if you look at that, what's happening. It's described to me in this graph is here is in terms of the Y motion, that's the downward motion, just the motion on this. Remember we talked about independent, how the the the, the downward motion is independent of the horizontal motion, even though they both of course act together in terms of how the ball moves. They don't they don't they they don't affect each other. But here the downward motion is one of a ball speeding up and then slowing down. Yeah, because it's flat here. This tangent here, this is called a tangent. It's flat, which means it's stopped, and it's also stopped here. So it speeds up and then slows down and then stops. And here we have the same thing: um, speeding up, slowing down, and stopping. Now this obviously is not the way a ball moves. So we have to speeding up at the start. In both these cases is fine but not slowing down so so what we'd have to do is we have to change the motion of this so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this tangent I'm just going to instead of having it flat this tangent I'm going to turn it so that this tangent is speeding up if you imagine this was a hill and you're on it with a, a sledge or a skateboard or something you would be going faster as you so I'll just uh, I'll just show that you'd be going faster, wouldn't you? It starts off slow and then speeds up, and if you want a greater acceleration, you would pull this even more, yeah. So and then translate. I'll do the same thing with this one. I'll, I'll bring them both in together. Again, it's the same motion. It has to speed up, yeah. I'm just so I get them more or less the same. We'll maybe have it like this. Have this tangent more or less the same, so like that. Yeah. Okay. So now, if I play this, it. I'm just, I'm just, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to take off the nerves curves. I can see the ball's floating slightly, but you can see that the actual motion of the ball seems to make more sense. Okay. So. So it's it's touching here and it's touching there and it's floating in the middle. Well, the f one of the th one tool that Maya has that's incredibly useful, just as you start here, is if you go into visualize. I'm just going to turn the uh, what I normally do too when I'm animating is in the show button. I would nor I normally go none. I get rid of everything and then I just turn on the stuff that I need. So in my case, it's going to be polygon. 